Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I'm getting back to work on my antique hay wagon restoration project. A couple months ago, I said I was going to set a task to work on this and make incremental progress every day, and I worked on it for a few days, then I had some other things come up, and I lost track of it. So, massive failure right there. But today, we're going to get back to it. I've got a couple of new stripping tools I want to try out. I've got a new paint sprayer I'm going to try out. And what we're going to work on right now is getting these wheels prepped, primed, and painted. I've already got brand new equipment tires ready to go on here. Just want to get them painted first. One thing that held me up before was indecision about what to do about the wheels. That these are the original wheels or they're similar to the original wheels off this hay wagon. And these are a lot wider and that was bothering me but really the more I thought about it I don't I don't really care that much and I couldn't find any I was looking for some used wheels I'm sure they're out there but I couldn't find any that were a match to that and my target here was initially just to have an antique hay wagon that was period specific and matched my 1941 John Deere A but beyond that I'm now planning to bale my own hay so I'm actually going to use this hay wagon so now that I've got the hay baler, I need to get this thing in gear and have it ready for spring to at least be usable, but I'd like it to look nice too. So I've done 90% of the cleanup and paint removal and rust removal on the two wheels that are original. These two need a lot more work, but I actually want to start with the ones that are closer to finished because there's a lot next to the bolt holes. So I want to see if this little tool here is going to get down in there and remove that right next to the bolt holes. So this little guy works great for getting right around the holes for the lug nut. In the past, when I was working on these wheels, I was using this type of a disc here on a grinding wheel, the twisted wire, or the larger version. I also was using one of these cut brushes, and now I've got one of these to try out. But mainly, I've used that kind of thing before, but you guys were telling me I needed to try a needle stripper. Like, what is that? And I guess this is what you guys were talking about. And I'm going to try it right now and see if it does a better job or a worse job than some of these other tools. I'm actually considering this to be done. It's still got a little bit of buildup. I don't know what the terminology for this is, where I've taken most of it off. But it's not by any means bare metal or a smooth surface. But it felt like I was having trouble and wearing out a lot of disc getting it past this. This was not removing anything, really. There were little chips coming off of it, but then I looked down at the wheel and I couldn't see any difference. So this is probably the perfect tool for something. I don't think it's the perfect tool for what I'm doing. This will work if you bear down on it. And it will take it down to bare metal. I've got one shiny spot right here. I don't think I want to go that far. I think I want to hit every inch of this and take off all the surface rust and all the old paint. But for what this is, I think that is good enough. Uh, 
that essentially just put a bunch of scratches in it. That was not doing the job at all. But I want to show you guys something else that came in the mail. And this is a pair of gloves. But it's a pair of gloves from one of you guys. This is a long time viewer, been commenting on my videos for a long time. He took time out of his day to mail me something with a handwritten note. It says, hey Brock, I'm taking a guess on your hand size. Maybe these will help with splitting wood. They are my favorite. I sell them on Amazon. Congrats on 100,000 subscribers and all the new toys to play with. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Jay Andre. I've talked to him on the phone before. Seems like a really good guy. And he didn't ask me to, but I'm going to share a link to these gloves. If you're looking for some gloves, they're Stealth Phoenix by Watson Gloves, quality since 1918. Okay, so this wheel is finished, and again, it's not perfect. Still got all that pitting, and this is what it looked like before with all this rust up here and all the paint. Well, I tell you what, I am really, really glad that I put those gloves on. If you guys have ever used one of these wire wheel cut brushes or the other style, they throw wires out of them, especially once they start to wear out. And all through my shirt, through my pant legs, on my bare arms, I can feel those wires and they're, you know, flying off and kind of stabbing me. So long sleeves would have been a good idea too. But definitely the gloves. Okay, so all the wheels are cleaned up and pretty much ready to paint. Only thing now is there's probably a lot of dust on them. So we're going to try to clean that dust off so the paint will stick better. To do that, I'm going to put a little bit of mineral spirits in this container and then just try to wipe the wheels down. I already blew these off with the air hose to get as much as I could that way. This is a new paint sprayer from Harbor Freight. I've used these before, but not a whole lot. So to get the hang of it and make sure that I'm ready and it's set up properly, I'm gonna run some water through it and just spray a board and see how that spray pattern is coming out. I think this spray gun was $69. You can spend anywhere from like 17 bucks up to two or 300 just at Harbor Freight. It came with the reservoir and most of the guns I was looking at came with the regulator, but not the paint reservoir. And I didn't realize I wasn't getting a regulator with this, so I'm going to regulate it for today off of the regulator on the tank, which isn't quite as reliable a reading as doing it right here. So here's my pressure regulator and the dryer. I've got it set at about 45 pounds. It actually says to run 40, but I've got a lot of hose between here and there, so you can lose a little bit of pressure, I think. Another thing about these guns I didn't know is they're called LPHV, low pressure, high volume. And so you need a high volume of air moving to the tool. It's spitting out a lot of air, but you want it on a low pressure. Turning the pressure up doesn't help. It just makes a mess, basically. But if you're using small diameter airlines to run to it, it's going to limit the effectiveness or how well the gun functions. 
So they say don't use any quarter inch airline. Well, I've got a bunch of quarter inch airline in here. So we may not get full, you know, effectiveness out of the gun because of that. What we're using here is this Magic brand that they sell at Tractor Supply. And this is Tractor Paint. And they have it in the colors of most of the popular tractor brands. This is Ag Yellow for use on John Deere equipment. So not construction yellow that John Deere uses, but the Ag Yellow that you'd see on wheels. So we're going to use this tractor primer and... Some, then some tractor paint for the follow-up. The instructions on this say to use their brand of thinner, but I couldn't find any, so I went to O'Reilly's and told them I had farm implement paint, and they got me this Krylon farm implement paint reducer, and we're going to mix that four to one inside our hopper, because that's what the instructions say. When I do the actual paint layer, I'm also going to use this catalyst and hardener, but the instructions do not tell you to do that on the primer. We've got our paint in here, and this is just going to be an estimation. It's supposed to be about four to one. This guy's marks on the side of the cup. It says we've got about 400 milliliters in it. So we'll take it up to 500, which almost fills this. All right, I've had a couple of tries already and I wasn't happy with it. I've been messing with the gun. The instructions on the paint can said 12 hours to dry and 24 hours for that second coat of paint. It has been about 21 hours. See what we get here. Doesn't feel tacky. Paint job's not terrible. I don't see any runs or anything. I don't know if, I mean, it's probably uneven thickness, but... I felt like it was especially challenging trying to paint something round like this. I just don't know. I don't know how you're supposed to do it. All the videos on how to use these guns show you don't bend your wrist. Just move your arm in long, even strokes. But if you just do that across here, you're not going to hit this angle here, which is different from this angle, which is different from that. So it feels like I'm just making little short passes like this and going over some parts twice for sure. But regardless, it's just a hay wagon. But I try to take it seriously so I can get better, so if I want to paint something that's more important, I've got that skill. Same as yesterday, we're going to add the reducer. And we're also, on the paint, we're going to add this Farm and Implement Catalyst Acrylic Hardener.
All right, well, I'm no painter, but these are painted and they're just some wheels. So I've got to do the same thing to this entire hay wagon. And there's a lot of work involved in that, but I'm going to stick with it and get it done so that I can use the hay wagon for hay. Maybe by the end of that project, I'll get the hang of it. Anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.